Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you three different methods on how to smooth your game's animations and overall polish. And these will help you in creating a smoother, more fluid and more polished feel to your game. The first example I'm going to show is the lerp method. So in this scene here, if I go ahead and run it, we have a basic example where the sprite will follow the mouse. But as you can see, the further you are away from the mouse, the faster the sprite will move and the closer the sprite gets to the mouse, the slower it will move. We can achieve this in our script attached here with some basic code. And in this example, we are using the lerp method. Now at the top here, I've defined our speed and I've obtained the sprite reference with a basic on ready variable. And then I also define our intended position at the top and I'll be setting it inside of our process function here to our local mouse position. After we've obtained the local mouse position, we can set sprite.position equal to sprite.position and lerp this over to our intended position. And the second argument for our lerp requires us to send in a weight. Now the weight is essentially going to be the percentage along the path that we will lerp to. So if our position started at zero, for example, and we wanted to lerp over to 10, if we gave it a weight of 0.5, we would lerp our position up to five. And if we gave it a weight of 0.8, we would lerp our position to eight. Now, as you can see here, our lerping weight is going to be our delta time multiplied by speed. And speed is set to four, but you can obviously change this. And again, this will produce the following effect where we have smooth motion to our mouse pointer. Now, another thing to note that lerp is not limited to just position, but you can also use it for rotation, scale, and even just basic variables. And this is obviously very helpful for smoothing out motion in your game. The next example I have here is going to be our cubic interpolation. And this will essentially do the same thing, but instead we have to define a very specific method for interpolating between four points. So if we go ahead and look at the code on this node, at the top we are getting a reference to the sprite so that we can move it. Then we are going to define an array of points. Now this is just so that we can get all of our points which we define in the scene. And these points are going to be the marker 2D nodes. So to get this on the ready function, we're gonna say points is equal to get the points dot get children. And now we'll have a reference to all of these markers. Now we can use these markers inside of our process function and essentially we're going to set our time equal to the h slider value and this is so that i can dynamically move the slider to move the sprite along our interpolation animation and then we are setting the sprites position equal to our cubic bezier curve and the points are going to be the point one which is the zeroth index dot position and then so on. We're getting the first point or the second one and then all of the rest of the points and then we are simply passing in our time which again is the slider value. Now the real focus in this script is the cubic bezier function and we are defining that function right down here which will simply take in four points and a weight and then we are going to lerp all the points together to return s, which is our value along all of the points respectively. Now, if we go ahead and run this scene, I will full screen this so that you can see, but I'm gonna drag the slider and you can see that our sprite moves in a very smooth arc and it kind of arcs between all of the four points. It will always start at the first point and end at the fourth point but these two handle points will influence the direction, just like a Bezier curve, which you can define in the curve resource. Now you might be thinking how you can achieve the same example by just using a simple Bezier curve resource. And you can do that, but the benefits of using nodes like this and using this cubic Bezier method is that you can more dynamically define the points. So let's say you wanted to move a curve between a few different entities in your scene and the entities could move around dynamically, this cubic Bezier method would always ensure that your curve is smoothly between all of the four points. And like shown, I can adjust these points. So if I put this one back here per se, put the other handle down here, it would create a more interesting Bezier curve. And you can see I go up slightly to way towards the first point and then the sprite moves down towards the second handle and all the way to the last point. 
Now our final example is going to do with animation and it's along the same lines of using curves. We have this basic animation in the scene and I've called it a rough animation. Now it will autoplay with the autoplay button here and we've also set it to loop. If we go ahead and play the animation, we're gonna see some very jagged movement and the animation loops just how we want it to but the movement is very jagged around the corners. Now there's a couple ways to fix this. The first and easiest option is going over to the tracks interpolation type and instead of setting it to this sharp yellow angle, which is linear interpolation, we're going to set it to cubic. Now if we play the animation once again, you can see that much like our cubic example, the position will be animated a bit more smoothly. If you want to go a step further, we can define this track as a Bezier curve track. And the way we have to do that, since we cannot convert it as it's already defined, is create a new animation here. And I'm going to call this smooth anim. We're going to set the length to four, set it to repeat. And I'm going to key in this sprites position. So the first position is going to be right here. I'm going to press the little keyframe icon. And here's where we want to check use Bezier curves. If we do this, we're going to have the option to define some curves. But before we do that, I would like to add a few more keys. So I'm going to go to our one time frame, add a position in right here, and do the same thing to add a few more positions. When we get to the end of the animation, I also want to duplicate the first frames. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit here, go to the end of the animation, select our first keyframes, right click and say duplicate. And now if we want to go into the curve editor, we simply click this icon at the bottom to toggle between our Bezier curve editor and we will have the option to edit all the values and the handles for this animation's curve. Now I'm gonna expand this a bit and the animation's gonna be kind of small but let me just show the animation quick. So right now we have the same type of animation where it's cubic but it's still pretty sharp and if we wanted to add any sort of acceleration to the curve, we could do that easily by adjusting our handles in the curve editor. So let's say I selected all the handles quick I could right click on one and say make handles balanced and this will apply a more smooth effect and if I wanted to add easing types or acceleration I could simply extend any one of these handles and adjust the animation much more specifically. I'm going to right click on this handle and make the handles free so that I can drag this single one and now if we look at our X position on the sprite since that is the curve which I edited. We have much more snappy movements and they kind of ease in and this is how you would more easily define the smoothing types of your animations in game and add more polish. But that will do it for this quick video. If you did learn something new make sure to leave a like. If you want to learn how to define curve resources and also use those I have another tutorial that is dedicated to just curves, and you can find that in the card that should be popping up in the video right now. And if you'd like to see more game development content and tutorials, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.